Ultimate Cinemassacre's Kongathon. As a little bonus for Kongathon, let's talk about the ripoff films. I'm not talking about parodies and spoof films, but films that are obviously trying to cash in on King Kong. Also, it needs to have a giant sized ape. It can't be a smaller ape like King Kung Fu or King of Kong Island or Schlock or Gorilla at Large or all those Three Stooges shorts that feature a person in an ape suit. Also, Mighty Joe Young disqualifies itself because it's too good. It was made by the same creative team as Kong, so if it's a ripoff, it's a self-ripoff. It doesn't fit. And if I did include it, it would beat out all the others by far. It's such a masterpiece, it actually comes close to the original. If I put it on a top ripoff list, I'd have to leave at least three spots blank because nothing else could come second to it. So, let's get started. Top 5 King Kong ripoffs. Number five, The Mighty Gorga from 1969. A circus owner goes to Africa to find a giant ape. While there, he's attacked by a plastic toy dinosaur. And I mean that, it's a toy T-Rex. It's awesome. Then Gorga, the giant ape, fights it, and this is it. Once you've seen this fight, you'll never think about life the same way again. The T-Rex also appeared in the caveman porno, One Million ACDC, written by Ed Wood. Ridden as if there's something to write. Number four, Queen Kong from 1976. This one is intended as a comedy and even had musical scenes. It's basically the same plot as Kong, but the gender roles are reversed with a Lady Kong picking up a human guy, and the final rampage takes place in London. The T-Rex fight makes another comeback, which is a slight upgrade on Mighty Gorga, also, it was made around the same time as the 76 remake when all the legal issues were flaring up between Universal, RKO, Paramount, and Richard Cooper. So it got numerous legal objections from RKO and Dino De Laurentiis who prevented it from being distributed, particularly in the UK. This is why it became incredibly hard to find. Number three, Ape from 1976. This is another one made to cash in on the 76 remake. It was an American and South Korean co-production. It begins abruptly with the giant ape fighting a shark, so I guess it's ripping off Jaws too. And holy shit, he tears the shark in half. There's times when we make fun of effects that look too fake, but then there's strange exceptions like this where it looks too real. I mean, they must have used a real dead shark and the person in the ape suit ripped it in half. It's nasty. The ape gets loose in South Korea, picks up a girl, fights the military, all that stuff. But the best moment is when the ape smashes a helicopter and then gives the finger, the middle finger. He flips the bird. It comes out of nowhere. Nothing else like that happens. It's incredible. For its Grindhouse re-release, it was retitled Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. No, I would not make that up. They used the tagline, not to be confused with King Kong. Whether it was done as a joke or to avoid legal trouble, it actually got them legal trouble from Paramount, supposedly, because they used the name King Kong in connection with their advertising and not as an actual disclaimer. Basically, they wanted to have their cake and eat it too, but just got a big shit sandwich instead. Much like the movie. Number two, Conga from 1961. Here's another one where the ape attacks London. This time it starts out as an ordinary chimpanzee who's turned giant-sized by a scientist played by Michael Goff, known as Alfred in the Batman movies. He has some rival scientists who are competing in his field, so he sends the ape to kill them. That's all the plot you need. Just get a giant ape, send him on a rampage, and you'll even get a comic book out of it. Apparently, the name Conga was similar enough to Kong, so they had to pay RKO a fee, again bringing the legal rights into question. The outcome of the 70s legal battle determined that RKO only owned the rights to the first two films, and all rights to everything else related to Kong was owned by the Cooper estate. Back when they made Kong vs. Godzilla, Toho had to pay RKO a fee, and Marion C. Cooper got involved and tried to claim he owned it, and for some reason it's, it stayed with RKO that time, uh, even though Cooper got... The Cooper State got it in the 70s, but I don't know. I, I'm not getting into all that fucking shit again. Anyway, the real reason to watch this one and why it ranks higher than most of the rest is because of Michael Goff. He makes a great villain. Holy shit, Batman. It was the butler all along. And the number one Kong ripoff. 
Mighty Peking Man, 1977. This is as good as it gets. The best of the ripoffs. It was made in Hong Kong. That's right, it's the only Hong Kong King Kong film. Say that three times fast. Hong Kong King Kong, Hong Kong King Kong, Hong Kong King Kong. It was re-released in the 90s by Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, he knows all the good stuff. The plot is the same basic thing. Greedy men go into the jungle, capture a giant ape, and bring it back to the city. The ape's love interest is a jungle woman who's been stranded for years and adapted to the wild. The ape suit is pretty good in comparison with the rest, and the miniature buildings, explosions, and special effects are all around top-notch for this type of genre. It's all the awesome Asian monster action that you'd want. But the craziest thing about this film is the ending. It has the most brutal and fucking cruel ending to any giant ape film ever. It's the same basic thing where the ape climbs the building with the girl and gets shot down by the military. But not only that, the girl gets shot too. They kill the girl. Isn't it depressing enough the ape has to die? They gotta kill the girl too? To make it worse, the reason she dies is because she can't stop clinging to the ape. She's the one who puts herself in harm. Rather than beauty kills the beast, beast kills beauty and himself. And they make you care for her. You want to see her live, and presumably she doesn't. Not only that, the shooting goes on for an excruciatingly long time. From the moment they start opening fire, about 10 minutes pass before he finally falls off the building. But before they even let him fall, they torch him! There's no way they faked it. The whole ape suit is set ablaze. Then he goes flying off the building like a giant ball of flame, and unlike all the other movies where they don't show the actual landing, this time they give you everything. He hits another building, which explodes. Damn! This makes the real Kong movies look like sissy films. Anyway, if it wasn't for the convoluted legal history of Kong, I bet there would exist even more rip-offs. Wouldn't it be great if the character was in the public domain? Because then we could have King Kong in space, King Kong bangs your mom, and so on. If they could get away with all these unauthorized Bruce Lee films, then why not more Kong exploitation? King Kong versus Bruce Lee! That would be something. <laughs> Hong Kong, King Kong, Hong Kong, King Kong, Hong Kong, King Kong, Hong Kong, King Kong.